this is Echo 3, and let's discuss arrow breaking. This can be a good way to save on the Delta V requirements on your missions. Most players are familiar with this enough to slow their crafts down as they return from the Mun and Minmus. I like to set a Kerbin periapsis between 25 and 35 kilometers for missions in the Kerbin system. In this tutorial, though, we're going to be using arrow breaking for interplanetary missions. The basics of arrow breaking involve converting kinetic energy into thermal energy. However, this means that all the air friction can generate a lot of heat. Therefore, successfully arrow breaking starts in the assembly building. Returning from the Mun or Minmus is one thing, but the velocity involved are not an issue for most of the pods. You can look at a part's heat tolerance to see what parts are more heat resistant than others. Parts like the Science Junior have a low heat tolerance, while the Mark III space plane parts have a high tolerance. For reference, the only planetary bodies in the stock game where one can arrow break are Kerbin, Eve, Duna, Jewel, and Lathe. Let's try constructing three different crafts and having them arrow break at some different locations. Our first craft will be a relay satellite around EVE. EVE can be a great place to take advantage of arrow breaking, especially if you are planning on landing, since most landers will also need some form of heat shielding anyway. Besides heat, there will be aerodynamic stresses on the craft. We will need to make sure delicate parts like antennas and solar panels are protected. The best way to do that is to use the ones that can retract or protect them in some kind of payload container or fairing. This simple craft will be able to get into orbit around EVE. Let's test it now. A mod like Trajectories can be very helpful for planning an arrow capture. There are a few online tools as well. I will put a link for one in the video description. Some of them are rather dated as the atmospheric modeling has changed, so you should check to see what version of the game the tool is referencing. Do not use it if it is for a version prior to version 1. As a general rule, I like to use a periapsis of 75 kilometers for EVE in order to arrow capture. Multiple passes are okay as long as the first pass is able to capture. If you have to make a small burn to finish getting in orbit, that can also be okay as long as you have the fuel budget to do so. I have a tutorial for sending probes to EVE. You can watch it if you have any questions about the maneuvers involved in getting to EVE. The last step will be putting a maneuver at our apoapsis in order to raise our periapsis above the atmosphere and we will have successfully put this probe in orbit around EVE. Our second craft will be a Duna lander and return craft. Duna is one of the easier places to air break because the velocities involved tend to be rather conservative and the atmosphere is thin and cool enough that most parts will be fine. We will still need to protect delicate parts like solar panels and antennas. This again is a simple Duna craft, the plan being to leave Kerbin at a Duna transfer window and air break directly into our landing. For a guide, I like to air capture with a periapsis between 20 and 25 kilometers. If I'm intending to land, then I will set a periapsis between 10 and 15 kilometers. These are guidelines, and you can watch my Duna tutorial for more details. Each craft will be different depending on its mass to surface area and how tolerant its parts are to the heat and aerodynamic forces. It is a good idea to quick save before attempting an arrow breaking pass. My suggestion would be to save right as you enter a planet's sphere of influence. Then you can make small radial in or out maneuvers to see what ends up working best. Something else that you will need to be aware of is that any lift generated by the craft will affect the pass. Lifting bodies like wings and space plane parts can raise your periapsis as you fly through an atmosphere. This will affect the final results of your aero capture maneuver. I have not seen an online calculator that will factor the effects of lift in addition to the effects of drag. And we're going to pull our chutes out and we will safely land at Duna. Then once we do that, we will begin to think about returning to Kerbin. We will want to get Val back home. So I will wait for a transfer window to get back to Kerbin. The process will be very similar to how we got to Duna. The major difference being that Kerbin has a much thicker atmosphere. I like to use a periapsis around 25 kilometers when returning a capsule from Duna. Most Delta V charts will highlight if an arrow capture is possible. By utilizing the technique, you can greatly save on the Delta V requirements for a mission. In some instances, the savings are in the 100s or 1000s of meters per second. It's a good idea to use the technique. Our last build will be a lathe exploration craft. This will need to be a bit more complex as exploring lathe requires a craft that can go to the various small islands. I have designed a small quadcopter that I intend to send to lathe. Now, we need to build a craft capable of getting it there. This tutorial is focused on arrow breaking, 
so I am less focused on describing all the details of each graft and how to make the maneuvers to get to our different locations. I have other tutorials focused on these topics. Please feel welcome though to ask any questions in the comment section. I am usually able to answer quickly. Are there any topics that you would like to see me cover in a future tutorial? You can also leave comments on your ideas. I enjoy reading what you have to say. The cruiser section is finished. Now we need a booster to get this into orbit around Kerbin. We do not need anything too extravagant, and I think these three and a half meter parts and a couple vector engines will do the job. I am using the in-game Delta V calculator to make sure this craft can get into orbit and transfer to Joule. And lastly, I'm adding a couple aerodynamic surfaces on the bottom just to make sure we're stable on launch. With our craft assembled, we shall launch to Joule. I have already time warped to a transfer window. To learn more about using online tools to plan your missions, you can see my ELU video. Besides being able to aero break at lathe, we can aero capture around Joule. Joule can be a very unforgiving planet to use for aero capture, so I engineered our craft accordingly. We will be coming into the system at a greater velocity than the other locations. The atmosphere can also get quite soupy and hot depending on the depth. It is my preference to use the mod trajectories to help with this, but a general guide is to use a periapsis around 175 kilometers. For reference, the atmosphere extends out to 200 kilometers. Normally, it is a better strategy to use lathe or tylo for a gravity assist to capture a round jewel, but this is an aero braking tutorial. At some point, I do hope to make a tutorial on gravity assists. The last part of our journey is landing on lathe. Lathe's atmosphere only extends out to 50 kilometers, but it does get dense rather quickly. Since we will have enough heat shielding, I'm going to use an aggressive aero braking maneuver and set my periapsis just 10 kilometers above the surface. Parachutes work here in much the same way as Kerbin, so our craft will be able to touch down safely. We can then explore this unique Julian moon. If you found this video helpful or enjoyable, please consider liking it and subscribing to my channel. It has been fun for me to make this content and to hear that it is helping others learn the game. I'm Echo3, and thanks for joining me to discuss aerobraking.